Welcome to episode two of Stop Talking Kens. Please help me welcome Jonah Boswell, my very special guest for today. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, <laughs> I'm Jonah. Um, we went to high school together. We did. Um, and now I work at your high school. <laughs> he does. Um, so that's exciting. Super. <laughs> Superb. Um, I'm a dance major and business major at Chapman. Okay. I think we should start with my hoodie. I really just want to get it out of my, the way. So I want to show you guys all my hoodie, my special hoodie. I wore the day that Jonah came. It says, 1-800-BOYS-LIE. And then the back says something even better, but we won't even go into it. Do you like it? I, I do. What's the back say? It says, we're... No, I can't. I can't do what, what the back... What does the back say? No. Okay. Yeah, we can't. So let's go back to high school. We obviously dance at our high school. So what made you decide that dance was what you wanted to do in college also? Right. Um, honestly, at the beginning of my like senior year application process, I didn't want to dance at all. I was like, I'm going to go for business, be basic. And, and I like was like ready to cut off dance, basically. It was like extracurricular up to a certain extent. And then I worked with a choreographer um, who kind of talked to our director, and she was like, why isn't he going for dance? And I was like... It's a good question. Because um, I just didn't think, I really didn't think I had anything to go wear with it. Like, you know, like the, the programs like Kaufman and Juilliard and NYU, like those are all like very like up there and they're talked about frequently. And I feel like people are always like shooting for those. And mm -hmm. it's like not reasonable, especially if you're like not like insanely talented, especially in ballet and whatnot, right? So I was like, I just thought, I don't think there's a place for me in a college program. Um, but I think after conversations with our director and with that choreographer um, and just thinking about like what I wanted to do five years past college, like thinking like not just like what I'm, what do I want to study in college, what do I want to do like past and after that, I think that's when I sort of like decided, okay, maybe I can find the intersection between my academic enjoyment and then my artistic endeavor and, and where does that sort of meet? Endeavor. And that's how I, I found <laughs> Endeavor. Dance. Endeavor, yeah. Okay, was the application process for dance a lot harder than the business one? Yes, it was a lot more involved. Um, business was just basically you apply, answer some generic questions about like business. Um, you submit like your academic stuff mm -hmm. for like the college itself. Dance is a lot more involved because there's like audition processes, um, interviews, solos, um, like rounds of, of things, not just like, you know, one application. It's like multiple levels and then there's a cut and then you come back. So it's this much is more stressing involved. me out. Going back to what you said about how you felt there wasn't a place for you in college in a dance program, don't you feel that everyone is gonna find their place? And I know a lot of people feel this way because I know I do too. Like college is scary and there's so many people applying now. Like Chapman is really popular now too and all the UC schools, it's very highly competitive. So how can we get the message across that everyone should put it put themselves out there and just try yeah that's a good question um i think that's like something like every senior and not even senior anyone who's in high school who like is a dancer whether you're competitive or you train at a ballet studio like that that sort of like mind banter of like there's like i'm not good enough to get into a company or a college program that's that's like very ge not generic but everyone experiences that right so i think it's important to like take a break and remind yourself like first ask yourself is this something that you really want to pursue mm -hmm. because the last thing you want to do is waste time and money doing something that you really aren't passionate about so if it's not something you're passionate about and you're not willing like we know at OSHA to do like five days a week multiple hours a day and then there's your answer right but if it's something that you love and that you know if you were to stop and then you would long for that dance or you would long to be in a studio or have those group of people around you I think it's important then to maybe pursue it and, and to consider it um I think my personal journey when I was debating whether or not to do it or not, it was like a conversation of like, would I rather get to the end of my college experience at Chapman and be like, I wish I would have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's safe to say for like a lot of things in life, like to get to a result or the end of something and say, I wish I would have blank, tried this, done that, um, you know, eaten this. It could be something <laughs> as small as that, right? Like it, it doesn't have to be these big massive things, just like the willingness to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. One grows you as a person. I think you just, you become more comfortable with trying new things and new experiences the more you make yourself intentionally uncomfortable and I think that's a little bit of it too like intentionally putting yourself out there and seeing what happens at Chapman do you have people like 
started the dance program as like a freshman and then transferred out Mm -hmm. like already yes um it's and that's not uncommon either for a lot of people to come into the dance major as a sophomore Mm -hmm. or as a sophomore transfer out um i think it's important like if you get somewhere to like let yourself experience it don't take like two classes and be like this Mm -hmm. is not for me like let yourself experience a semester or a year especially if you're going away from like another state like let yourself experience the seasons of of what it's like to be in a new place with new people and unfamiliarities and just like sink into that and and see what happens um but no it's not uncommon for people to transfer out to something else that they're more passionate about or for people to come in and realize you know what i should have done this since freshman year do you feel like like we go to a performing arts school is that similar to the dance program in a college it is. I think we're we're getting there. Um, what we're building is getting there. We're very like college prep very now like in all of our prep. classes. Yes, um, it's getting there. We are. We're really bringing in like teachers who have that mm-hmm. collegiate experience, um, who set work at colleges, um, who bring like that that college experience to yeah. high school, which is very unheard of i think for a lot of schools in in the united states and then and then i think to like have that ability and have that such strong connection to people who are the ones looking at you for admissions it's it's pretty incredible i think what osha does for their students um in terms of commercial dance osha as a whole putting their students in front of college reps like every year consistently showing um at universities what we do what we're about i think it definitely helps yeah yeah because we have college fair coming up where i have to do a solo Right? That's what I do. You do, yeah. yes. The director and was Oh yeah. I get to have a two I don't really know a ton, but okay. it's like two people, two to one. That's what Director Berger told me. It's two, two to, to one. one. I'm the one and then there's two like college professors or something and mm-hmm. I like talk to them after I do my solo. Mm-hmm. Well uh, uh, yes. And then I yeah. do a ballet class and a modern class. Yep. Yep. I think Chapman will be there. Chapman will be there. So you have a unique perspective. You went to OSHA and then you taught at OSHA literally the year after. You didn't take a break at all. Right. <laughs> he right. was like, I love OSHA. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what advice would you give? Like you, you see things from both sides. So right. what advice would you give for students who are still going there and not even going there, just applying to college? Hmm. That's good. Um, my advice I, and I said this to you guys on Monday like I think when you're in OSHA you're like I just want to leave I want to get out I want to try new things like it gets old especially if you go since like 7th grade you're there for longer than like the average high school experience um, and the days are long so just everything feels really extended there so you feel like you spend a lot of time probably more there than you do anywhere else so I think when you're like in the midst of attending or you're about to graduate, like senioritis sets in early, I feel like. For a lot of people, it definitely did for me, which is ironic because now I'm back. But I was like, I, d- I just wanted to like leave. And I think a lot of people have that shared experience at any high school. Like I, I just want to like get out and go and sort of like spread my wings. But then like, I think once you leave, you realize like that safety net mm-hmm. that you had in high school is gone and you're like an adult now and you kind of have to like lead your own way. You make your own schedule. You, If you go to another school that's like not 20 minutes from your house, like you're yeah. on your own to eat by yourself, do your yeah. laundry like you know what I mean you're you're very much independent so I would say like while you're in high school and you're experiencing that like I want to leave I want to get out like enjoy it because in the retrospect it's like so short I mean it's only four years and college is also only four years and then like what after that you're like expected to like get a job and start yeah. you know I mean like there's a lot of responsibility after that ends so I feel like the idea of like I want to, I want to be done I want to rush I want to just finish like yes I think that's a valid feeling but like I, I think it's important to emphasize like make the connections while you're in school to the people especially at OSHA we have such a diverse group of students that like you could work with after high school as well as after college like to make those connections and, and enjoy each other's company because like once you graduate high school you might never see the people again so make the connection i feel like i i personally need to be more motivated to leave like i feel like i love it so much like i'm like i don't want to leave high school yeah don't i seem like that like i'm very invested in our school i feel like i think i think it's like comfortable i think like you you, you're at a level not like you particularly but like especially if you enjoy something like you get comfortable and then if something like takes that away from you and you enjoy it or or you know what to expect there's like a, a level of comfortability with it and then someone gives you something new that you know nothing about it's scary yeah um but it's also exciting exciting at the same time like as much I need to find that excitement yeah I'm more yeah. just like scared right now because I've been there since seventh grade mm-hmm. and I feel like so close to everyone there so like I just like don't want to leave yeah but, but it's good it's good to get new people in your life 
you think I'm going to be famous with my podcast? <laughs> um, Do you? This is like taking away from my thinking. Um, now I have to think about this. Let's think. I it mean, should be an easy answer. Uh, yes. Yeah. You do. Like, you think I'm well-suited for a podcast. I do. Really? I, Elaborate, please. Okay. Uh, let's... <laughs> I think you're well-suited for a podcast because you love asking questions. Right. Um, I've asked I you many. A, I think a good host, like, knows no boundaries to a certain extent. So, like, I think... Do you think I have no boundaries? No, I think, like, sometimes you ask good questions, and sometimes you ask questions that I'm like, hmm. Going along with my no boundaries, okay. can you name... He's known me since what, like 10th grade, 9th grade? Yeah. A long time. Long time. So, can you say some pros and cons about me? But, like, I told the twins they have to be nice with this. Like, okay. don't be rude. Right. <laughs> pros and cons of Mackenzie Couch. Let's see. <laughs> hmm. Okay, an obvious pro is like you're you're very friendly with everybody. So, really? like, you're easy to talk to. Oh. You know, some people like you, you say things and they're like, mm hmm. And then you're like, okay. You kind of walk away. Right. But, like, I think you're, like, very engaging in conversations, which makes you a great podcast host because you're engaging. Um, you're funny. Thanks. Yeah. It's one of my qualities I, like, yeah. lean yeah, yeah, into. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say cons. I'm just going to say, like, areas of growth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sticking to our individual development plans. Um, areas of growth. Um, actionable items that you could take. <laughs> I think I think areas of growth. <laughs> It's gonna be mean. No, it's not. It's not gonna be mean. Just say it. It's not gonna be mean. You know how you say your middle name is like drama or dramatic? Like you know like my middle name is dramatic. Yeah. I am dramatic. Sometimes you're just dramatic about things. No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not dramatic. Wait, can I ask the host a question? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um No. (laughs) (laughs) I take it. I'm not dramatic. I think the people sitting behind the camera would agree that I'm dramatic, but it's like, I'm not dramatic. It's just like, I take things very personally and okay. it's like, I read into things deeply, you know? Uh, no, that, yeah. It's a good quality though. Like you're investigative. Yeah. I'm investigative, not dramatic. I think yeah. my senior quote was going to be drama is my middle name, I but know, it's not that but, anymore. Okay, yeah. Good. You want to know my senior quote? Wanna, what's your senior quote? Okay. At, oh, it's good. Remember, remember one of the pros you said about me that I'm funny. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is my senior quote. Okay. No one better steal it by the. Oh, should I say it? No yeah. One's, no one's gonna steal it. Someone's gonna steal it. It's really good. I actually I can't say it. Okay, we're gonna do a part two with Jonah when I know what college I'm going to, and then I'll say my senior quote. Okay. What is the biggest challenge you have faced in high school or college? I'll give you the option. You can pick which one you want to answer. Okay. Um, I'll give you two college and high school the biggest one i've experienced in college has been time management which is mm. ironic because osha like they really they do a good job at like teaching you time management but like college just gets like even more um especially balancing like the, again the two majors and work at the same time and then like also trying to have like a social life like it's it's a lot um so the biggest challenge was like stretching myself too thin um and like not having enough time for me and to decompress and especially since we're like living in an age of like everything is like just so on the up and up and like it's accessible if you want to know an answer you can have it in in like instant gratification google google um google so like everything i get my answers for my tests at school that's scary don't say that i'm kidding um don't say i can can, i'll fail you out of all your burger classes he's my teacher I'm jelly. She cheats on everything. She's told me. Um, no, no. We live in, an, in, a, in a generation, I would say, that like everything just feels very angsty and like everyone's like always on high with like everything. So mm. I think college is already like a very exciting new anticipatory experience and then adding like onto that like I was studying two things and I was working at OSHA like upwards of 30 hours a week. Like I like had no time to like do things I wanted to do because like it was like what did you want to do like that like, you couldn't do like, like go on a walk because okay. like homework and then like sleep and then like if I wasn't sleeping I was answering emails so like it's all good things it's all very like you know like mm-hmm. career focused but I think it's important to like yes like have the grit and like the determination and like the extreme focus to like go for what you want but I think there needs to be like more of of a a personified not a personified like a I don't even know what that word means so 
right. um, and there needs to be just more like um, agreement that like there it's okay to take a break like it's okay to not always have to be doing something better than the person next to you like you don't always have to be like oh you got into Harvard well I'm going to Stanford and I got into Harvard like you know it's yeah. everything's always like how much more can I do and yeah. that and that comes to a certain point where you're just like exhausted and college is very much like that so that was my biggest challenge like what have you found helps finding that balance because a lot of people already go to school they go to dance like that's what I do and I know I struggle and then you have it like two times as hard sure, yeah so like what have you done to find that balance and be able to make time for yourself knowing when to say no is, yeah, is yeah. really important um because like in college like everyone's gonna ask you like do a club or help me with this or choreograph for that or perform in this and it's exciting it's really exciting but like when you have like six other classes you're doing that are like three hours of reading that night from like your 80 page tech 80 page like 80 pages of the textbook one night like it's a lot and you have to know what to prioritize so time management are you a in a thing. sorority at college I actually don't even know this answer. So I, I'm a, fr a fraternity would be the right fraternity? word fraternity a sorority's for girls there's a difference yeah, like a frat and a... Oh, you're like in a fraternity, are I'm you? I'm not in a fraternity, no. Yeah, no. I don't feel like you would be. <gasps> That's offensive, why not? Because you wouldn't be in oh, it one. Okay. A sorority is for girls? Yeah. This is news to me. Uh, you should go to, like, if you go to Chapman, you should would be like, you I want to join a frat. Would you see me in a sorority? I mean, uh, actually, yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, it's good. I, it, Greek life is, is fun. Greek? It's called Greek life. Like, at schools, they call it Greek life because everything's really? like Greek letters, yeah. Okay, so... At, when you graduate Chapman, mm -hmm. two more years, three more years, three more years, right? Three, three more years. Yeah. Um, you're going to end with two majors, right? Dance and business. Mm -hmm. So what route right now do you feel like you want to take? Right now, as I go into like my sophomore year... Um, I, f I feel like I want to try and find the intersection between the two. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like it doesn't just have to be, I'm dancing for fun and now I'm going to do business, or it's like, I'm dancing and business is like the fallback plan. I, I really, I believe that in any area of life, there's an intersection between two interests. So I really, I'm passionate about finding like where those two meet, like bringing the artistic qualities to a dry business like that seems more like academic like why not make it artistic and creative like why not bring that quality to that and same thing for for dance and and for artistic endeavors right mm. why not bring like the analytical the the professional or whatnot so mm. i think like finding the intersection between the two and and moving forward with that there's so many opportunities um yes on the performative side of dance but also on the other side of the table, I mean, like on the business side, the casting, the, the producing, the directing, like all those different things that are more business oriented. There's a lot of opportunities, especially right now um, with like streaming platforms becoming popular and my podcast, your podcast becoming popular. <laughs> of course, um, there's a lot of opportunity there. There's also, I think it's fun. And I think there's something to be said about having a career while your body allows you to mm. in the performance side. Um, Cause there will come a point can't where dance you forever. can't dance forever. Yeah. So, um, but I hate the idea of like having a like a a, a plan Either B or, or a, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, like I think there is a way to combine the two, especially in dance and business. It's it's not an uncommon combination for things of people like or majors at least. Um, so I think I'm passionate about finding like where those two meet um, and moving forward with that. In your perfect world, what's your dream job? Like you can have it. You don't have to apply. He has to think about I this do one. To, I have to think about this one. There's a lot I want to do with my life. I'm I'm definitely someone who's not like I want one job for the rest of my life. Mm. Like I wanna I wanna kind of like do a lot of things. Like I kind of want to like maybe direct a little bit and then go over here and dance or perform and then leave that and then go own something and then wow. sell that. Like I don't know. I think there's. I just feel like life is is too short to like just have one thing and like unless it's like I don't know like. No offense, like if you're like an engineer, but you have to study for like a long time. That's what Katie talked about in the last engineer. episode. Yeah, it's a lot of wow. like if you're like a doctor, like something you have to study like years for, and like that's your career. Then be a doctor. Then be forever. a doctor forever. But right. like if if you have a lot of interests and you're inter interested in like entrepreneurship or anything artistic, like there's so many things to do. Right. Why not? Why not see how much you can take on? Okay, so I didn't really answer your question, but like yeah. So he doesn't have a dream job. So going into my next question seniors are like applying to college right now right like me yeah, yes like you so once it's over like november right december january january a little off um did you feel like a lot less stress once you submitted the common app or the uc 
Uh, it's like it's, there's like two two different stresses of senior year. It's like the applying and like getting all of it out there, and then there's like a whole other stress that I feel like no one ever talks about of like getting in. waiting, <laughs> and like and then you like get the email one day and it's like an application status has been oh uploaded, God. and then you just have like everything you've like ever like built up to that point is like one click away, and you're like oh here we go. Don't you feel like we college is four years, high school is four years. There's like a stress after high school mm-hmm. to get into college, but then after college, there's the stress of like figuring out what you're gonna do with your life. Right. I feel like the stress after college is worse because like high school, it's like you're basically going to do the same thing for four more years. I mean, essentially. Essentially, yeah. Like that's the goal. Yeah. For me, at least. So like, isn't the stress more? Not to like make you all stress, right. but like. <laughs> Jeez, um, I have three more years to figure it out. Um, that's what everyone says. Like, they get to senior, and they're like, I have another year to figure it out. And, and like, they don't yeah, know. No. Um, it's scary if you don't know what you want to do by then. But I think, it's too, I think it's a different kind of stress, and I think both are, like, very valid stresses. I think, like, figuring out where you're going to go, because that has an effect on what you're going to do after right. college as well. So, like, if you're out of school that, like, you really aren't there for a right reason, or you're there because it's just the name of the school, but you really have no business in their program, or you're just there for the cloud of it, whatever it might be, like, that's why it's so important to choose a program that's right for you. Because not just you can, based off the name. Right. Like, right. You, the last thing you want to do is waste time in a program that is not um, suited for what you want right. to do after. I think it's it's also important to like look at alumni from programs like what are they doing how are they giving back to the university um, how did you know that like chapman was where you wanted to go um it was there was it was a lot of things um there was a lot of factors that went into it um it was close to home mm. so um definitely more affordable chapman's a private school so already it's the tuition's very expensive and i knew i could commute that would save a lot of money every year because room and board is like Two thirds of like the college expense. It's crazy how much it is to like room and board somewhere. Um, so I knew going into that, like I kind of wanted to see if I could save a little bit of money because I'm, I'm I'm paying for school on my own. So I was like, how? Where can I save? Like, where could I really help myself a little bit? So I figured, where can I pick a school that still has what I want? Don't pick a school that has a bad name. Like, go somewhere that has a good reputation. Um, but like, so Chapman had that. They were they were not far from my house, and and they had what I wanted to do. And they had alumni. They have alumni that are working, that are, are in the industry, that are giving back to the program, that come back to the program and talk about what the program helped them do after graduation. So I think it's important to see like what are people doing once they get out of there, or do they leave? And they're like, yeah, the the education was great. My time at X, Y, Z, wherever you went was was amazing. I learned a lot, but now like I'm not connected anywhere. I don't have any roots in a city mm. that like is is. That's why California is good because yeah. there's like so many things to do mm-hmm. in California, like mm-hmm. outside of the college. Yeah. Yes. It, yeah. It's important, like location wise. Yeah. Like on the weekends, are you auditioning for things or are you like at the mall because there are no auditions? I would like, be at the mall, <laughs> like 100. percent It's important to have that those options. So like, yeah, L. A., New York, like the things, that, the cities that you think of, especially in the entertainment industry, like the cities you would imagine, like Miami, um, New York, L. A., even Orange County because mm. it's not far from L. A. Anywhere in really California, um, it's important to like sell yourself somewhere that you can build roots so that when you do graduate, you have a connection to an internship or a job or casting or auditions. You know what I mean? Like you're actively doing things to prepare for graduation because like once you graduate I mean you really are it's like unless you're going to go to grad school it's yeah. kind of up to you to figure out what you want to do yeah. which is why it's important to like be rooted somewhere do you want to stay in California forever I do, oh, I, do. Me too. I don't want to I don't like I, I, I enjoy visiting other places but you like California is where you want to be yeah yeah that's good so I think this concludes part one don't be sad Don't if you're worry. sad that it's over because we will be doing a part two. There's a lot to unpack. Yeah, there's a lot Jonah and I can talk about, not even related to Dan's. Anyways, I just want to thank you so much for coming on. Of course. Thank did you, you have a good time? I did, I did. And he gave us a lot of insight. So if you have more questions you want Jonah to answer, comment them down below or DM me. Don't DM or him. Me. No, don't DM him. <laughs> DM me. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. You have to sign my board. I know where I'm going to And take a star- Starburst if you want good. to. And I'm going to bring him merch. Merch is coming. And you guys can buy it. But I'm going to bring him merch to school because it's not here yet. And oh, okay. I'll post a picture of him in it. Yeah. So all of you guys can see. Good. But thank you. Yeah. And I will see you guys in episode three.